Well, when you look at my next guest's resume, he has started in shifter carts. He's won late model races. He's won an ARCA championship. He's won the Xfinity Rookie of the Year. He's embroiled in a chase for the Xfinity title this season. And, oh, unless I forget, he also is driving in the Cup Series. We're talking about Ty Gibbs, who, uh, Ty, I understand, first of all, uh, advance happy birthday wishes to you. You'll oh, move you. from that teenager. One. Yeah, you'll move from the teenager ranks to a 20-something, but that's a very impressive and assorted resume for a driver of your age. Was that by design or happenstance? Um, Honestly, I feel like it's God's plan for me to be able to do all this, and I credit all of uh, the glory to him, and I'm thankful to be in this position. I've grown up in a great family that has provided me great opportunities, so I've been very thankful for all of it. You know, it, it always fascinated me. I remember when your granddad first showed up at a at a cup race back in the 80s and really wasn't quite sure what his life after football was going to be like. And and he, over that period of time, earning a second Hall of Fame bust, this time in racing, when you look at your grandfather and the way he has impacted the industry that you're making your living in, what would you say is his biggest contribution? Um, I feel like he's done a very great job of leading the team. He's a great team leader. He has led, left a great legacy. I felt like my whole family has. And, um, and I feel like he's been, I feel like one of the best to do it. So it's really cool to be able to have him as a grandfather. But honestly, I don't really think of all those things. I just think of him as my regular grandfather, like, like most of us do. And I'm very thankful to have him. He's been very, very awesome. And I've had another great grandfather in my life too, so I've had a, I have a great family. So, is the coach known as Grandpa Pop Pop? How do you refer to him, Coach? I honestly just call him Coach. Coach, I like yeah, all, I get that. Yeah, all grown up listening to that, so that's kind of stuck. Me, stuck <laughs> me, so. Ty, take me back to that phone call that you received uh, about midseason after uh, Kurt Busch got injured at Pocono, and what you had to go through in the next eighteen hours. I understand you had never even sat in a simulator at the cup level. And now you're drinking water out of a fire hydrant in the middle of the night. Yeah. So, uh, definitely got, I got a call late after my Xfinity race. I came home and, um, I got a call and telling me that, you know, Kurt was injured in the wreck and, um, they need somebody to fill in and they were asking me and it was really cool to hear that from, you know, Denny and, and Michael. So I was very excited to have that. And, um, uh, I had to fly up really early the next morning on race day to get fitted in the car. Um, I was very thankful for NASCAR letting me do it and being able to get my rookie license really quickly. And um, it all worked out. And it's like God gave me an opportunity in my life to do that. So I'm very thankful for that. Are you comfortable now? Because look, it's it's um, it's showtime for you. You've got your paying job first and foremost, and that's to win this Xfinity title to bookend the rookie of the year trophy you've got in your case. So splitting your time between the two, are you ready? Can you win at both levels? I mean, for sure. I think there's opportunities to do that. So I just make sure I do the best I can and, and all of them work the hardest I can. And I feel like this will be there. Are you aware, Ty, when you go back and you recap a race and watch it and watch the film, because look, film preparation is so critical that you're so darn good at what you Thank do. You. <laughs> I mean, I, I, to be honest with you, I, I don't really ever go back and look at that. I feel like I just try to keep my safe, myself at a humble state. Um, and like I said, God's up gave me great opportunities in my life and um, he's blessed me abundantly. So I'm just doing the best I can. Um, and all for the glory of him. You know, away from racing, uh, there seems to be a move more towards faith than there was maybe, um, you know, 10 or 15 years ago. And, and yeah. your witness is very unique in that regard. Thank you. Uh, you are you aware that most likely that's far more important into For how sure. you will be judged than how many trophies you get or, you know, how many wins and checkered flags you receive? I mean, for sure. I feel like that's a that's a great question, Jack. And uh, to be honest with you, I feel like my my main focus is on following God. I mean, I'm a sinner, and we all are, and we fall fall short of the glory of God. But He died on the cross for our sins and rose again. So, I mean, I'm I'm going to heaven, and I really don't have any. I shouldn't have any worries. I feel like my whole plan is laid out before <laughs> me. 
Um, and I get to have the best time ever for eternity after I pass away. So I'm just excited. And I mean, to be honest with you, just knowing that I don't have less worries and it takes all that away. So like worrying about winning the championship, you know, winning, I could be racing in next year. I could be, ma I could be janitor next year. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what's going to happen. And I feel like that's what leads my uh, faith. And it's not my faith. It's just truth. It's all true. So I don't, I, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's all, I feel like it's all true and I just follow it and I enjoy it. And it's, it's truth. I don't have to worry about following the world. And I'm thankful for that. I'll share with you just a, a, a personal moment. I'm convinced that I'm God's sitcom because <laughs> he'll tell me, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah, and then he'll sit there and go, Oh, I can't believe he did it. I can't believe he did it. <laughs> So uh, I'm very, very proud that at a very young age, oh, uh, you, you have such strong faith. All right, let's shift gears so to the task at hand. They say that in football, when it comes time for the playoffs, everything gets ratcheted up. I can attest to that, having covered playoffs and Super Bowls and national titles from the sidelines. But for you as a competitor, uh, going into the playoffs the way you are, and really, in essence, uh, you know, trying to – trying to win your very first title at a premier level in NASCAR. Do you see the, and feel the intensity ratcheting up as well? Like you said, to be honest with you, I don't really feel, I don't have any worries. Like I just don't deal with that. And I know and I'm accepting that, you know, if in next year that I don't, I can't be racing then I can't, that's God's plan. Okay. So I just don't, I just do my job and I feel like that's how I live in peace. And that's true peace. That that's all I'm saying. So um, I don't really have to, I feel like I don't really worry about, this i just don't i just do my job and i mean if i if it doesn't work out it doesn't work out if it does it does and i feel like it's it's been a great ride and um you know i, I just it is what it is tell me where you think you've improved your racecraft this year um i think just overall i feel like just i feel like i've sharpened my sword and all different types of buckets and um you know from pit road to pit stops to how i'm getting in the pit box to um restarts to you know, making sure my tires are warm in a certain way before the race, the green flag drops back out. So it does a lot. You know, I recounted when you, when you first came into the wind tunnel here, a pretty, uh, pretty deep and various resume as it mm -hmm. applies to racing. So, I mean, all work and no play will make Ty Gibbs a very dull individual. So what away from racing is your secret pleasure? Um, I have, I mean, uh, to be honest with you, I, I have so much outside of racing that's, covers all of my like I, I have so much more going outside of my racing world and um, I do in my racing world so this is just my my job but at the same time it's my hobby so I just enjoy it but I enjoy my personal life I have a lot going on and um, and I enjoy uh, you know being able to go do stuff with my family and I just I, I have a dog that I can hang around to so what's a the lot. dog's name what's the dog his name, name is Bronson he's a Doberman he's two years old Oh my gosh! I he's just a little, he's a he's a he's a good boy. He's a really big dog. So he's like a little horse. I'm honestly very tall. So, <laughs> listen, it's always a pleasure to visit with some up and Thank coming you, drivers. More important, as I said to you, I had the good fortune of covering your your late uncle and your dad when awesome. when they were knocking people on their keisters at uh, at the Stanford Larry University. Stanford, yeah. yeah. So awesome. uh, best wishes, my friend, and uh, continued success. And uh, as long as uh, you keep listening to what the man above tells you, I don't That's think you're right. going to have any fears whatsoever. No worries. What the outcome you, is. Good to talk to you. Thanks, man. How's it going, brother? You take care.